The wait's nearly over. Evil Genius 2 is almost upon us, and world domination will soon at uh, Hang on, have we built a lair yet? Oh my god, we haven't built a lair yet. Here's how to do that. Hello and welcome to the channel, my name's Gareth and I've spent the last 11 months deliberating optimal locker placement in the 2004 Evil Genius so that I'll be really, really good at building lairs in Evil Genius 2. There, I said it. And even though the new game's designed to let anybody enjoy the pursuit of being an absolute jerk on a global scale, the construction toolkit is really powerful. So if you want to go full Stanley Kubrick and sweat every detail while you author a unique and staggeringly complex masterwork, then yes, yes. You can do that. But we've all got to walk before we can run, with the notable exception of MS-DOS, so let's take it back to the early game in EG2, the tutorial phase, where we learn the fundamentals of lair design and get familiar with some of the most important rooms for it. If you're new here, welcome and congratulations on having great taste and clicking instincts. Get new videos from us as they drop by hitting the subscribe button now just there. Do it. Go on. You know you can do it. Thanks. Let's start right at the bricks and mortar, carving out the shape of your sick and twisted homestead from sheer rock. The room being laid out here is the barracks, a super important area in any lair because it determines how many minions can come and work for you. And as you can see, rooms aren't all boring old rectangles. Leaving some rock in this barracks gives minions a bit of privacy whilst they're sleeping, organising their lockers or reading Goosebumps books by torchlight under the covers after lights out. That's enough, say cheese and die for you tonight, Terence. So the layout of your whole lair is pretty much up to you. Rooms can connect with any other room type, and even though it would be an absolute security nightmare, you can even make your entire lair open plan. You know, if you've been watching too many Architectural Digest videos on YouTube. Seriously though, be warned about this because if agents get past the first door, they've basically got access to your entire lair, haven't they? Speaking of which, if you don't have power, your evil lair is really more of an evil storage locker. Traps won't work, radio and computer machinery, which we'll look into in a minute, and even lights will all be offline, so building a nice power plant like this is another super early game priority. Here you can see minions laying down a few generators that will give you enough juice to expand into new rooms without tripping the circuits and plunging your lair into darkness. Veterans from the first Evil Genius will know that any agents who find their way inside tend to eke out power plants quickly because they know what havoc it can create in your lair to be without electricity. With all that in mind, it pays to spend a bit of time planning a few moves ahead, thinking about the overall layout, and then placing the power generators in a room that you'll be able to defend with traps and patrolling minions and the geography of the layout itself. Once we've got a barracks that lets us recruit a workforce of loyal, dastardly and only a teensy bit cute underlings in yellow jumpsuits, and a power plant to keep us online as we continue building, the next room to focus on is the control room. Here, you assemble a lot of high-tech comms gear that in simple terms lets you gather data about the outside world, then send minions out into it to make mischief and money. Here, we're dropping in some radio repeaters, which will increase our broadcast strength, and the more that we have, the more criminal networks we can support. As criminal networks go up in level, you need a higher broadcast strength to keep them operational, so there's a lot more going on in these rooms than the hypnotic bleeps and bloops of all that radio equipment. With the control room assembled, we're ready to send some of our workforce on an away day. The world map is where you do all of your immoral bidding. Well, outside of your scandalously lax HR policy within the lair, anyway. And it's also a major revenue stream, so you'll want to head out into the world as soon as the control room's complete and you have a few minions to spare. By embedding minions in different regions of the world, you can uncover jobs like small-time bank heists or more elaborate, unpublic-spirited schemes, netting you money, artifacts and infamy for your trouble. And obviously, the sooner you send minions out there to start being all evil, the sooner you start filling your coffers and uncovering a map of potential criminal activity that ultimately leads you to taking over the entire flipping world. Just make sure you don't send so many employees out there that there aren't enough workers back at the lair to get basic tasks like construction and security detail done. Right, so let's talk about how the story works. This is a narrative driven game after all, and although there's a separate sandbox mode where you can really let your hair down, or well, not, which is totally fine too, 
sorry, Maximilian. In the main mode, there's a narrative arc driven along by the characters. And obviously, we're not going to spoil that for you just before the game is out, but what we did want to do was have a word about side stories, basically secondary quests within the game. Again, you find these on the world map after your criminal networks gain sufficient intel and the rewards you can reap for completing them are plenty. Loot items, new minion types and showdowns against crime lords and super agents. They're optional, of course, but for players who want to peer under every rock on their way to global supremacy, they add a dash of added intrigue and drama. Did we mention new minion types? Only joking. These words are all written down for me on a script. Finding and capturing different unit types on the world map is really useful, because it allows you to strap them into an interrogation chair and shake them down for new info to make your lair more advanced. What you're seeing here is a guard being encouraged to spill the beans on an ingenious training device known as a punching bag. What will they think of next, eh? With the schematic unlocked for this, uh, punching bag, you can now arrange them in your own training room. This is where minions learn to become better minions. Uh, oh wow, actually, you know, that's not fair. You yellow jumpsuits, you lot do a lot of important work. You know, good job. Different minions, let's say. Specialists. And you don't need to micromanage this process, or any other that's happening across your lair. Evil geniuses take very much a white gloves management approach, telling everybody their plans and then telling them to go and make them happen. So if the evil genius wants more guards, the minions make it happen here in the training room. The lair's coming along nicely then. We've got beds, lockers, power, a control room to keep our tabs on our exploits across the globe, and a training area for making guards to keep your lair safe. And that last bit's important because the more you get busy on the world map being dastardly, the more heat you'll get from do-gooders who, and this is political correctness gone mad if you ask me, don't want one lone megalomaniac ruling the entire world by force. And sure, the common or garden minion will have a good go at defending your home. You've got a high alert button waiting for you on the HUD that instantly changes all minions to a maximum security state, and if they're up against one or two low-level interlopers, they'll probably manage them. Even your genius can get into the mix of direct combat, although if they die, it's game over. So when you really need some hench, you call in the henchmen. Before you get them under your payroll, henchmen exist out there in the world as crime lords in their own right, and picking one is an important decision not just because their unique ability will affect how you deal with agents and tourists, but because the other crime lords and their syndicates don't look on you favourably after you choose someone who isn't them to be at your side. Picking a henchman will make enemies, in other words. And that's where we're leaving it for today, but Evil Genius is coming to Steam very soon now on March 30th. Pre-orders are now go, so head over to the Steam store and reserve your copy so you're ready to put all of this lair building expertise into action. Thank you for watching, leave us a thumbs up if you did, that helps us out, and remember to subscribe to the channel to get more from us. Until next time, if you want something doing, hire a massive workforce to do it for you in a huge secret lair.